Hey guys, welcome to Roto Riot. This is First Flight to Freestyle. This is a new limited series that we are putting out in addition to our regular Monday episodes. And in this series, we're gonna be taking a new pilot from his first FPV flight all the way to doing real hardcore freestyle. So in case you're new here, all together, I'm Drew Camden and I go by LaDrib and this is our new pilot for the series, Eric Farewell, it goes by Aviator. I'm excited guys. I have flown a little bit of drone stuff over the last few years, mainly camera platforms. I've watched a lot of the greats and I have successfully crashed my very first FPV drone, just missing a cop car into the side of a building. Uh, I'm not what you would call anything like proficient. So he promises, what was that thing you called a Rubik's Cube? We're gonna and do Rubik's Cubes. I don't we're gonna know what do it is. power loops. We're gonna do all the crazy stuff. When I'm we... excited. So I think this is what's gonna make you a great student for this series is that you have a little bit of drone experience. We're not starting totally from scratch. We'll move through things pretty quickly. Uh, in particular, drone experience is on other DJI drones, right? You've exactly. flown Mavics. We've got, got Mavics, Inspire. Inspires, Inspire 2s. We, we have our own YouTube channel and we do our best to create really great content. We take people how to fly powered paragliders. We do fixed wing flying and we use drones to capture it all, but I've been missing the FPV experience. And our filmmaker Reese, who's just tremendous with FPV, has let me hold his, but I've been too scared to really fly it properly. <laughs> so in this series, we're gonna be using the DJI FPV <coughs> drone. I think this is a really great way for people to get into true FPV, especially when they have the background that you have, because you can fly this drone with flight assistance modes that make it feel very similar to a typical DJI right. drone, like a Phantom or even an Inspire. But you can pull all those flight assistances off one by one and eventually get this thing flying just like a legit FPV drone, doing the power loops and the Rubik's Cubes and all that crazy stuff. So what I'm excited about it for me, I saw this release video drop mm -hmm. and it takes away all the things that make me kind of scared of flying FPV because I don't like having tons of lipo batteries charging in the house. You mm -hmm. know, I've, I have a friend whose house burned down from that. Right. So I'm anxious about that. I'm always worried about how my charging settings and that kind of thing. Even with RC airplanes that we've done with flight tests over the years, it's just there's so much into setup that I don't get because I'm not an FPV or RC guy. So I've got like seven flight test airplanes in yeah. my house right now that I don't know how to bind to a controller. So you're gonna help with that too, hopefully. <laughs> Absolutely, I mean, that's kind of an unfortunate part of getting into this hobby is that you wanna get into it because you want to fly, but you find out that to get into it, going down traditional paths require you to learn how to use all these different accessories. And once you're into it and you're wanting to fly maybe a legit custom built FPV drone, you'll you'll accept getting into that stuff and you'll learn to actually enjoy a lot of it. But just getting started out can be so overwhelming. So what's great about this setup is it just leapfrogs you past a lot of that stuff. Let's take a look at you know what you get. You know, you're talking about the charging being very intimidating. Just like any so old DJI sick. drone, you just plug this thing into the wall and you plug this end into your battery. It charges, it balances it for you. You don't have to worry about a traditional LiPo battery. I mean, the trade-off is this is significantly more expensive of a battery right. than what we would fly on our typical FPV drones, but that's the trade-off that you're making. You're I think the biggest trade-off we're making, and anyone who's flown at DJI anything knows this, mm -hmm. we're gonna have to update this thing all the time. How many firmware updates can they fit into one of I'm, I'm actually intrigued because not having <laughs> laid hands on it yet, my Inspire is like an hour every time you want to fly it. You are lucky in that I've taken care of all the firmware updates for you before we get into this. But yeah, be aware that while you won't have to learn how to balance charge lithium polymer batteries yourself, you're going to have to do a fair amount of firmware updates using the DJI app. It's not that bad. It just takes a little bit of time. In the package with the drone, you also get a radio and a set of FPV goggles. I'm so great. excited about these. So What's great is these are the same goggles that we fly our custom built drones with. So if you get into this and you decide you do want to graduate and start building your own or maybe buy one of our pre-builds, whatever, these goggles can stay with you. You That's can awesome. bind them up to air units and fly other DJI equipped FPV drones, not just their own ready to fly. So I can look like Ant-Man too? You can look like <laughs> Ant-Man all the way through. I <laughs> love it. What they did with this radio I think is pretty cool. They made it very game controller-like. Looks like know. an Xbox controller. <laughs> yeah, I think it's gonna feel very familiar to people that don't have drone experience that maybe just have some gaming experience. Again, you've flown other DJI drones, so you're used to holding a larger radio, but I think for others, this is gonna make it again, a lot less intimidating. Now, one thing I notice here is that you you've removed the centering on the stick and it's something you told me beforehand, but why do, why do you choose to do that? Right, so when you get this radio out of the box, both sticks have full centering. But what I did is I removed this back piece here and adjusted the, uh, the screws to remove the self-centering 
from the up and down on the left stick. And that's because when you fly a traditional FPV drone, this stick doesn't behave like it does on a DJI drone where this stick is more of an altitude stick. Right. This is truly a throttle stick like you would see with traditional RC flight. And when you fly an RC aircraft like that, you typically don't have centering on the throttle stick. You wanna be able to put the throttle where you want it and not have it fighting you. Um, and you definitely don't want it trying to center it because center would be, what, like 50% right. throttle. And really you wanna be able to pull it down to zero throttle whenever you need. Now in the beginner modes, they do intend for you to fly it with self-centering because in normal and sport modes, it works like a Mavic where it's an altitude stick and center stick is maintain altitude, above centers go up, below centers go down, all that stuff that you're probably used to. But in my approach to this, I went ahead right away and removed that self-centering because I want you and anyone that wants to move to freestyle as quickly as they can to get used to the feel of not having that self-centering throttle, which gotcha. means that even in those beginner modes where it does altitude hold for you, you gotta center it yourself. And I think that's gonna be a good thing that right out of the gate, start getting used to how that feels, get used to you having to be in control of that stick because that's not something that you wanna have take you by surprise when right. you go to acro mode. You wanna get used to that. And I, I do think it will build that muscle memory because when you're flying in an acro mode and you wanna maintain altitude, you'll find a point it probably won't be right in the center. Maybe it'll be at like 40% or if the battery's low, maybe like 60% where the drone wants to stay there. So when you're in the beginner modes, that point's always gonna be at center stick, but once you get an acro, you'll have to find that sweet spot where it wants to maintain altitude. Well, I tell you what, this thing looks insane. It looks incredible. I think they've just smashed the visual kind of definition of what a drone can look like. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of carbon fiber ones like you see on the wall behind me, Yeah. but this is something totally different. I'm excited. Let me get you to come down to my place. We're gonna go into the hangar, get to the airport, do some practice flying. Absolutely. And I promise not to crash it. I mean, if you do crash it, <laughs> we got a couple. We wanna be getting you through this quickly. We wanna show how quickly someone can learn freestyle. So we're gonna be pushing you. We're gonna be trying to get you out of your comfort zone if you crash it. I'm a little bit scared. I'm like, I'm like this much scared. <laughs> I mean, lie. it's not gonna take a beating like one of our custom built drones that are have a carbon fiber frame. You can break this thing. So as you guys are learning, you know, exercise some caution. But for the case of you, I just want you to just want you to send it, man. Don't worry about it. Let's oh, go. God. We are actually at a uh, private municipal airport. This is Class G airspace. We're part 107. There are no manned aircraft in the air. So this is a great place for us to be flying and learning drones. And I think it's going to make for an excellent backdrop for uh, teaching this guy how to fly. <laughs> Isn't that boot up awesome? Every time. I laugh that every time. That boot up is so sick. <laughs> now you've flown Mavics and stuff like you said. Mavic, Inspire, Phantom. I did all, did all that stuff because it's easy. But this know? is going to feel a lot like a Mavic in the modes that you're flying in. But there'll be a couple differences. In the center is going to be maintain my altitude. Above center is going to be take me higher. Below center is going to be take me lower. So it's going to behave the same, but you have to center it yourself. And that's okay. going to, I, th I believe that's going to teach you some throttle control right out the gate. You're not relying on that spring to keep you at the center. So arming in this mode is just like a DJI drone that you've flown before where you push both sticks together. Um, she's now, armed. She's, she's ready to go. So I mean, you can take it off line of sight or you can go right into the goggles if you want. Goggles, we got it. All right, so go ahead and raise your stick to the center. Now that's your neutral point. Now right. if you're in the air, it'd keep you level. Level, right? So now on the ground, it's done nothing yet. So now as you raise the stick from that point, you're gonna start going up. And then when you get to a height you'd like, just recenter it again. There you go. Like one of the other DJI drones, you, if you push forward on the right stick, that'll move you forward. It's a lot more wobbly in the wind. You can feel the wind, I guess, because it's so much smaller. Well, I think what you're seeing is that the, the camera isn't gimbaled the same way that you're used to. Ah. So on a Mavic, the camera is completely gimbaled. No matter what the, the drone is doing, that camera is just locked. On this, you have the pitch axis is gimbaled, and there's a little bit that's taken out on the roll axis digitally, right? But it's really not meant to be a stable platform. They're not trying to give you that look of a Mavic. They want you to see what it's like when you're flying an FPV drone. And you are already going straight for the self orbit. I was like, that's, hey, we watch gotta... flying sideways. Don't hit the camera, man. <laughs> <laughs> so right now in normal mode, you've got some collision avoidance. So I mean, go ahead and just try and run into a wall. Like, Wait, seriously? I, I, I just want you to, yeah, I want you to feel what I'm talking oh, there's about. there's a yellow bar on top of my screen. Yeah, now. that yellow bar is kind of a proximity. Oh, there's a red bar now. Yeah, red means you're getting close. Are you just still pushing for it? A little bit, it's kind of holding me off. It's actually going up now. Yeah. 
Yeah, it doesn't want you to. It does not want me to it finish. <laughs> You're getting really close there. That's really cool. So I know the Inspired does the same kind of thing. I think that one will straight up stop you. So this is, this is that was awesome. I, you just went right for it. Okay, yeah, she's got some power. Yeah, it has a little punch. Yeah. A lot faster climb than anything else the DJ has made, that's for sure. All right, so this is super baby mode. This is this is your normal mode right now? I, I have to say it's pretty easy. It's really intuitive. Yeah, I don't really know what to even coach you on. You've just got it right away. Um, now, now talk, talk well, me about what you're doing when you're steering. So I'm trying to use yaw, but you said it's coupled together, right? Right, so something that they did is they pre-coupled yaw and roll together it's so a lot just like doing it all for you it's like an old school air coupe i don't know if you know what the air coupe is i do not so it's an airplane built in the 40s that was designed to have no rudder pedals okay so it actually put everything together in the stick or the the yoke in that case our filmmaker reese got to fly in one up in vermont uh, or new hampshire this summer and it was enlightening to say the least <laughs> <laughs> did you see how it banked for yeah, you it's like banking without and you have to do anything with the right stick right and that's again getting you used to what FPV looks like visually, unlike a Mavic, where no matter what, the camera's level and FPV, as you go through turns, you see the banking of the aircraft. So it's getting used to seeing that, but as quickly as you can, because again, the goal here with what we're doing on Rotor Ride is to get you flying acro manual mode as soon as possible. I'm still a little concerned about that we're after gonna, the last experience. We're gonna, <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna start turning some of that stuff. So right away, I'm gonna go ahead and reach down to the C1 button, I'm gonna click it for you. And now does it say low roll angle? It does. So it's still gonna be mixing it, but it's gonna be a little bit less. So we're, we're working your training wheels off. So I have to force that right hand. I mean, go ahead and try and just yaw yourself and you'll see it'll just, it'll mix less. I just, see it, yeah, it's so a lot more flat. Yeah, so it's more flat. One more click of that button, we'll do that soon. And it's gonna turn off that coupling. So I want that coupling gone because I want you to be learning to move the sticks yourself. I don't want you relying on the flight assistances any longer than you need to. But obviously, I want to learn that stuff, but it's nice to have the confidence. Like, I feel completely comfortable with this, just having, you know, primarily Mavic and Inspire experience. This mm -hmm. feels totally comfortable. Absolutely. I hear some beeping, what's that? It says, low battery, low return battery. to home. Don't even so, gotta worry about it, she's coming home. She's on her own. Look at that. Don't kill me, droid army. <laughs> That's pretty sick. Yeah, and I, I like that you can just worry about flying because when you're getting into FPV, there's so much stuff you need to think about, your gear, your batteries, all this stuff, and when you're in the air, just worry about flying. You're not gonna damage your batteries because it'll just come land for you if you fly too long. That's just cheating. Yeah, it, it is cheating. And like realistically, for the most of the stuff that I wanna film, like I wanna film my kids behind the boat, I wanna film paramotors, like I can fly in that mode and get you can get your shots. What do you think, 40% of the capability of the drone? Yeah, I'd say that's good. I, I just think that where the shots are still gonna fall short is on the roll control. Gotcha. And that if something's down or up, right, the pitch isn't coupled to the gimbal. Gotcha. So you can control the gimbal, and that's something that we could play with with your dial. You can right. have the Same camera look the up and down. Right. For me, that feels very unnatural. I want to look down and up as I pitch down and up. Well, that's what makes that your video so flowy. Right, yeah. and so, yeah. so we'll get you there. All right. And I think flying around in these modes, you're lacking that, but I think, you know, if you maybe, if you're super comfortable with a Mavic or an Inspire and you're used to working a, uh, you know, the gimbal on a dial right. or something, maybe that's more comfortable for you. But that's not what we're doing here. I wanna learn how to do it Because right we're way. about acro. Yes. We're about acro. So <laughs> this is supposed to be a tutorial unlike what you're gonna see elsewhere. We're doing a tutorial that's to get you on acro as quickly as possible. So today we got the drone out of the box. We got you flying in normal mode. There was really not much to coach you on. You pretty much just did it. It's completely intuitive. Is there someone else? Is there more? Is there someone that's worse? We gotta get my wife. Let's get your wife. We gotta get my wife. We have to prove just how easy this is to fly because I don't, I don't know. You've flown a drone a little bit. A little so this bit. Might, you might be too much of a ringer for this one. So All we're right, gonna we'll see let her we in get. here. She's gonna try this out. She's gonna love it. No! <laughs> So we're altitude up and down here, mm -hmm. and then left and right turn. Mm -hmm. And, and all you have to do with that thumb, forward. just push forward. Even yeah. if I don't have altitude? Um, yeah, I need to be up in the air to go forward. Okay. So to get to start the motors though, yep. pull both sticks down into the center. So into the two corners, there you go. Oh. Now bring them back to the center, there you go. Now move all that right. stick up slowly. Ooh. Slowly, a little bit. And now recenter that throttle. There you go. You are now okay. holding your altitude yourself. Yay! You're doing it. That's step one. You just keep that nice and centered. Okay. Now, before you start going forward, why don't you practice turning with this thumb 
without losing altitude. Because we've taken out the spring on the left stick, so it's not gonna center for her. So you have to learn the skill here right. to rotate the drone, which you're doing great at that. That's awesome. And you're not losing altitude. So that's what you're gonna do when you wanna turn. Okay. And the last thing we're gonna mix in there is when you're not facing us. So turn a little bit more so you're not facing us. There you go. On the on this stick, just push forward to go forward. Okay. Oh. Go forward and then while you're going forward, so just keep holding forward and now mm -hmm. steer with that stick. Maybe okay. turn around, do a whole U-turn and try and come back to us. She's turning. She's doing it. <laughs> She's doing it. She's going haven't, down. Haven't crashed yet. <laughs> you're going up a bit to so recenter yeah. that stick yourself. Now we could have made this easy when this remote comes out of the box this stick is supposed to be center sprung to make altitude control very okay, easy so I'm but i like to take it that down out a little bit yeah to bring it down forward because that freaks me out just a little bit i'm a little freaked out right i'm watching you like <laughs> <laughs> having the audio being able to hear the drone and hearing it move is freaking me out i think that's the part that's freaking oh uh, yeah this isn't a video game <laughs> i know it seems like because you're looking at a screen but what you're seeing is tied to something happening in the real world if you crash, there's real world consequences. <laughs> they I aren't know. very big. That's what's but... freaking me out, man. <laughs> Where's the gap? I'm super proud. Just keep yeah. the stick center out. We're setting up your gap. Everything yeah. is centered. You're gonna, you're gonna do more than Eric did today. Just bring it over nice and slow over here. You need to lean on something. I got you. Yeah, I feel, rock. I'm feeling a little nauseous. I got you. Oh gosh, just get crap <laughs> out of me. Sorry. Just nice and slow. You're gonna have to bring it down a little bit. Try to find, just center it in the, the screen. Bring it over. You need to turn to the left a little bit. Get it nice and centered. Okay. Forward. It's nice and slow. Nice and slow. Just keep it. Commit. 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 Keep going. Forward. Keep going. Forward. Oh, yes. Yes. That's awesome. Yes. All right. Okay. Before you fall, I'm going to go ahead and lower this stick. It's going to auto land. You're safe. You're safe. Wow. Gap. What do you think? But you did it. That was amazing. Oh, yeah, perfect. that was my first time doing anything <laughs> of any kind of drone, anything. Well, that was just great, Eric. You it was pip pip cheerio. All right, Eric, you did amazing. Uh, I think you you really took to that very quickly. My wife um, did amazing. She exactly. got through obstacles and did not have a panic attack. I have to say though, she's telling me she's still feeling seasick. You really? I, I think uh, it's just one of those things where it's oh, all right. No. I mean, she's trying something new. It can definitely be nauseating the first time that you go immersive in the goggles Zoom. your vision is blacked out other than the screen and then this happens and your inner ear doesn't feel that it can be a little i had a blast i think mm -hmm. that to me hey i'm ready to take some some training assists off i can't wait to start seeing what this room can actually do because mm -hmm. behind the camera guys this guy was ripping this thing around and I'm just enamored. It looks like so much fun to be able to have that much control, that much feel, that much dexterity. That's yeah. the word. Yeah, thank you so much for having me, man. This is gonna be a blast. Absolutely, I'm really excited to see you get through the next steps. I mean, normal mode was no problem for you. Nell got it. I mean, her first time <laughs> touching seemingly any type of controller, she was able to fly a drone around. It's pretty Really cool. incredible. So I think this just makes it super easy for someone to pick up a drone, and get the experience of FPV. So guys, stay tuned for episode two of our first flight to freestyle series, where we are gonna start peeling back some of the flight assistances. We're gonna uh, get him up into sport mode, which is gonna get him flying uh, quicker and turn off that obstacle avoidance. And we're also gonna turn down and eventually off the auto coordination. From there, we're just gonna keep on working our way towards eventually the big one turning off self-writing when you're in manual mode. Eric, thank you for coming on this series. I'm looking forward to uh, seeing your progression. If you guys are interested in the type of flying that Eric is used to doing, make sure to visit his channel, Aviator. He's flying around with his body. He's up in the air, hanging from a parachute. So this, this shouldn't be too intimidating. And I think you're gonna get up pretty quickly. I'm excited to see the future. Uh, power loops and split S's, you said that's tomorrow, right? We'll get, the, what, no, whoa. <laughs> okay, you may be ready to go. We gotta take him on a journey. Okay, we'll get there. We'll, this guy's so anxious. We'll see you next time on First Flight to Freestyle. Uh, there'll be a link in the description to the full playlist so you can follow along with this full series. You could also hit the bell so you can get notified as we post these episodes, as well as our weekly Monday episode and show you all the incredible things you can do with an FPV drone once you've mastered the art of freestyle.